This is Jackie Helvey and I am here at Imbibe with Mandy Brown and Cindy Moran. I got it right that time. <laughs> uh, and uh, we're going to talk about mainly Mandy because Mandy is such a great entrepreneur. She uh, has a bar called Zogs and she also has a restaurant called Imbibe. And uh, of course everything has changed over the last you know many months so uh, but first I'd like to start with how you got here well it was after uh, we were all in New Orleans or around New Orleans uh, that's where I grew up and um, Cindy's my mom by the way oh I'm sorry <laughs> that's, details uh, details that's actually really important here <laughs> right? Right. and so after Katrina in 2005 my brother and I moved here together and um, my mom uh, what, when, when you came about was in seven. Two years later? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, we uh, had enough. We weren't going to go through that again. Even right. spent my whole life there. Wow. It was enough. But you ended up in a better place, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Or still, just a different place, maybe still not. Still home, and we go back and visit a lot. But uh -huh. this is a much better quality of life. Right. So, um, Mandy, how long has you started with Zogs, right? Yeah, I bought Zogs in 2010. Zogs has been around since 1993, and uh, I bought it in 2010. I kept the name because I, I like I like to say it's because it kept things uncomplicated. But really, like, I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't even know how to change the name of the place. So I was like, okay, cool. It's just called it. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh. And came in 2015. I sound like I'm talking about kids. Like, right, right. Well, <laughs> it kind of is. It kind of is. Mm -hmm. was born, yeah, 2016, you know, early, like, January 2016. Yeah. So, um, Imbibe is a Cajun restaurant. Mm -hmm. And, of course, after hearing where you guys are from, that makes sense. Um, what made, after running the bar for so long, what made you decide to go into the restaurant business? Well, I, sp I spent every day for about eight or nine years with the bar um, just talking about how I would never, ever open a restaurant. <laughs> I spent every day of my life doing it. Uh, so I, I don't really have a real good answer to that question, honestly. Um, I've just been in food service my entire life, and I really like it, and it's where I feel comfortable, and it's the only place that I can really multitask, and like, like successfully, you know? Mm -hmm. and. Um, and I just, I, I really do like it. I understand the complications that come along with it. So, you know, that's why they call us lifers, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, I I had a friend, I had a friend who wanted to, like, he, he and I were, were very good friends, best friends, and we were going to open a spot together. We had a really bad neighbor situation <laughs> down here, here in this uh -huh. space. Spot. Yeah, right, because right. Zogs is on the top floor and the uh -huh. vibe is on the bottom. And uh, we we kind of made a really fiscally irresponsible decision and just snatched the spot up as soon as our neighbors were evicted or whatever happened to whatever. ensure that you wouldn't have to go through all that again yeah uh-huh yeah and it's I, you know i think back on it it sounds like a ridiculous decision to open an entirely new business but i you know i have the whole place i got the whole walk-in you know i i got everything well, it wasn't ridiculous, but it seemed like it at the time, I guess, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think had, it was a great decision. Well, I mean, we kind of just had an idea and we kind of just did it. Right, you know? right. And uh, so he and I opened it 50-50, and it was actually a pizza place before, you know, because that, that's what my, my buddy specialized in. He made wood-fired pizzas, mm -hmm. and he was very, very good at it. Mm -hmm. But a, uh, a few months into it, he left, and uh, I switched the menu over to Cajun food because that's what I no, I mean mm -hmm. that's what I what's accessible to me. Right. So, so now, um, Zogs is uh, tell your address here. Okay, so it's 108 Henderson Street, and Zogs is technically 108 and a half, but mm -hmm. it's just all 108. And um, we're right right next to where Time Out is now, and the Presbyterian Church and True. So we're so close to Franklin Street, but but somehow still super invisible. <laughs> so you right. know, which is. Good and, and bad, I think. Uh -huh. Now, you're, you're one of the uh, restaurants that was amazingly able to stay afloat during the pandemic. And I know that you had um, takeout service was your thing. Mm -hmm. you, you switched over to that. 
uh, but now everything's changed again. So what's going on there with Imbibe? Well, so what's going on is that we, we never closed, not for a day. Uh, we, we that's that's pretty amazing, you know. I'm incredibly stubborn, and I have no idea when to stop something. Like even if you, you know, I never sit down and I and, and looked at the numbers and was like, does this make sense? I just said, you know, I just thought about how bored I would be. Yeah, if yeah. I didn't come here every day. Yeah, I kind of got the impression that you were a little driven. <laughs> I mean, just a little. Well, I'm also I'm also like a very lazy procrastinator a lot of times. So I mean, you know. I don't see that, but <laughs> oh, I haven't, um, I haven't renewed my car registration since oh, oh maybe three, three. <laughs> it's okay. I already have a ticket. It. It's fine. It's fine. That kind of stuff. So, right, I mean, right. I really just my buddy John was working here, and um, he is a computer wizard, and so in twenty-four hour, forty-eight hours, we had a website up and running, online ordering delivery, you know, and and it was all new territory, and the you know the website was. It was, I mean, it was tough. It was like we had to completely reroute like everyone else. It was, but it was fascinating. Yeah. I thought it was fascinating, like just to watch everybody. And Zogs could not be open legally. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, now I guess it's the opportunity for a month or so. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deep Concentrate clean it. Concentrate on that. You know, mm -hmm. But then a month turned into like yeah. 13. Right. And right. so what's going on right now is that. Zogs, we, we reopened Zogs. Um, my dad and I deep cleaned it and waxed the floor. I mean, my dad waxed the floor and like everything. I and mean, he's, it was, it was kind of incredible. And we reopened Zogs on May 15th. And we, you know, we kept doing what we're doing here and uh, running food upstairs and, you know, but we're not open for dining yet. And we're not doing, you know, sit down service, table service or anything. Because mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can't really staff it right now. Right, and that's another this, issue. Yeah, so this this place became a warehouse for all the stuff that, you know, Zog's like, we had to move a bunch of stuff to clean it, to clean upstairs. And mm -hmm. so this place, you know, we, we positioned the camera really well so you can't see the, you know, stacks of to-go boxes and, you know, whatever else. But it does, you know, it's not, but September 1st, we're looking at September 1st. For opening for and buying. For reopening or mm -hmm. thereabouts. Okay, so if somebody wants food from here now, what do they do? All they do is go to our website at uh, it's it's imbibenc.com slash order. It's pretty easy. Okay. And you can order online for pickup or delivery. We're only open for dinner right now. We did lunch all through summer, but mm -hmm. I mean, up until July. So it's those hours lesson. are what? 4 to 9 p.m. You can do the pickup and delivery stuff, and that those will be extended when the when the school's back and everything. Right. And, then, and what about upstairs? Upstairs is, um, so it's 5 to 10 during the week and 5 to midnight uh, on weekends, on Friday and Saturday. And okay. we're closed on Sundays. Okay. And the one more thing that I wanted to mention was your radio show. You have a radio show. Yeah. Can you tell folks about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's a WCOM in, mm -hmm. in Carborough, which everybody... I think everybody that watches these is pretty familiar with WC. I would think so, they yeah. They are. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so it's me and Mike Benson and uh, Chris Jordan, who you interviewed recently from Team Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know he was involved with well, that. Well, that's because he goes by Jordan Christopher. When he's oh, that's very okay. Important distinction. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the three of us. It was uh, uh, Mike Benson and me and, and Carrie from the... Right, right. Our right. foodie group mm -hmm. and Stevie Murtaugh from uh, Oak Leaf, and so I mean Stevie and I have known each other since since the hell days. But they, uh, you know, hell was a bar, by the way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The hell days. <laughs> we ascended from hell. Yeah. I, I, well, I, I was partial hell. owner of hell for. Oh, a I didn't bit. know that. Yeah, I bought into it, but um, that was yeah, that was fun. It was a lot of fun, but I knew CB from back then. So the four of us got together and started this this radio show. Donald, who is the uh, what executive director, executive director of the of WCOM. Oh, I don't, I don't oh, keep yeah. up with that anymore. He, uh, <laughs> he, well, he wanted a show that was about the food scene around here and like who's uh -huh. opening and who's closed and who's closed forever. And right. What, what happened? Like, what happened to you? You know. So we got together and. We tried to get a we tried to get a guest on every week, so it's 
usually a bar or restaurant owner. Mm -hmm. We've had, we've had a bunch of different kinds of people. I actually have somebody from the Board of Health that's going to come do a show with us, and I'm super stoked. Roberto. Yeah. Oh, oh cool. You love Roberto. I love Roberto. I don't um, care what he does for a living. I just love Roberto. I think, <laughs> I think that, I think the Board of Health perspective, perspective for, like, throughout COVID, it's, it was fascinating. Right. You know? Because, I mean, yeah. they were, all of a sudden they had to look for completely different stuff. Right half of their workload was taken away and then replaced by people reporting anti-maskers and you know it, we've talked about it a lot it's pretty you know everybody's life was affected differently it was nuts. yeah but that's what the show is about technically and when it when does it air that is noon to one on sundays and you can stream it live or you know from the website or listen to it's, the it's 103.5 fm right yeah 103.5 fm yeah i, I say technically I because that, right? usually we just sit around and grass a little bit we do yeah. we drink yeah. we drink beers stuff so i mean you know right. we, we lose focus after a while <laughs> oh i wouldn't know anything about that yeah. Who knows? <laughs> from being from new orleans we wouldn't either yeah. <laughs> so my, my mom is here with me today because she retired and can't stay still so she opened an entire cake making business out of the kitchen oh cool and, and what's so, the name of that uh, humble cake oh nice humble cake, like humble pie do you because have a you have a website for that also or I'm on hers oh, okay and um we started making king cakes after i retired and it absolutely exploded i made 30 king cakes the first King cake season, which is January 6th to Mardi Gras Day. Right. And then we're in North Carolina, yet mm -hmm. everyone wants king cakes. Mm -hmm. Well, they're and hard to find. And then I made 75 the next time and over 100 the next time. Wow. So it's just growing. And, you know, so, um, well, your dad and your brother yeah, both we're, uh, mm -hmm. did, were both bakers. And um, so my, my uncle mm -hmm. had one of the best king cake Ever. bakeries in, in New Orleans. Oh, that's yeah. so one cool. year after year. Yeah. And, um, uh, Mandy's great grandfather, right? Yeah, my great grandfather was uh, Paul Blanchet. Paul Blanchet from Brennan's. From Brennan's. He, and he, oh uh, wow! He invented bananas Foster. Right. So there's a lot no of history. Kidding. No kidding. We make a bananas Foster cake after <laughs> wow. in his honor. So um, there's a lot of background, food industry background. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, no wonder your food's so good. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I took a bunch of her recipes. The crab bisque is not mine. It's got her name on it on the menu. Oh, and it's so good. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm not even fully sure that she gave me her actual recipes. I am. It's, I, am. <laughs> I absolutely did. I do not. I will share that. I can't share it anymore. But I use, you know, I think food should be shared and enjoyed by everyone. Right, so. <laughs> right. Well, it's great talking to y'all, yeah, and I learned a little too. something, too. How about that? <laughs> well, continued success, and it's Thank great you. to see you both. Well, thanks so much for having me. You You're welcome. <laughs>